feel the darkness leaving you. Yeah, I did. I felt it coming out <laughs> like it had no chance. It was gone. I didn't want to be here anymore. I feel love like I've never felt before. <laughs> Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18.3 After I read your book, I just felt that a lot of my questions kind of clicked, and I realized that I was stuck in this 3D realm of, of fear. And I just, I just want to get out. I want to go up and, and I just, I want to be, I want to take my kids down the right path instead of the fear-based path that I was taken down. Okay. Melchizedek's soul purifications, otherwise known as baptisms, are a methodical and intuitional process of mindfully using the elements to influx and awaken the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in you, and cast out all dark energy from your heart. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. James 5.8 This is a complex process known as the doctrine of baptisms. In Hebrews 6.2 All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. 1 John 3.3 3. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. James 4.8 I was just baptized by the water today. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Flesh is born of flesh, but Spirit is born of Spirit. John 3.5 And it was by far the strongest for me of all of them and it really it really brought me to where I feel like I was aiming for um, I felt a lot of I felt a lot of darkness leave today I was surprised <laughs> honestly I an exorcism of sin is far heavier than any emotional release and unique to the order of Melchizedek you know, asking God to help me and to not leave anything behind, just get it all out. Like, felt it, taking all that darkness out of you. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning. Tell me. The first few of them, it was mostly, I think, emotional releases, just kind of getting into the hang of. of of, of what we're doing here and um, you know by the third one I was feeling I could feel all the darkness inside of me not want to do it again I could feel it kind of say you know oh gosh we got to do this again <laughs> like like it knew it was it was coming and Sin, in its most raw form, is the seed of darkness, controlling the thought and emotional process by way of the subconscious mind. This controls your actions and reactions of sin in varying degrees. Keep your hearts with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 Matthew 5.28 also spells this out. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh unto a woman to lust after her, committed adultery with her already in his heart. I felt things leave I didn't even know were there. I feel like a new a new love that I haven't felt before. And you could feel the darkness leaving you. Yeah I did. I felt it coming out 
like it had no chance it was gone and didn't want to be here anymore um each day was different each baptism felt different some of them felt better than others um About halfway through, I guess, is when I really started feeling good about them. Like, I didn't feel reluctant to come in and do it. Like, I was, like, ready to do it. I was ready to face to face them. And the things that came up during the baptisms were very eye-opening. This baptismal process of being born of spirit exposes these self-defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms, and third-dimensional attachments like sitting ducks. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Ephesians 5.13 Hidden things will be revealed. Luke 8.17 The invisible becomes visible within you and outside of you. The beast within you will be exposed. Whatever version of your lie that you are living because of this beast within, will also become exposed if you come with the courage to face it. I realized that I guess I found that block you're talking about. Tell me. I guess I've always felt so angry and resentful. I'm filled with it filled with anger and resentment my whole life and I've always blamed people for it to identify admit or acknowledge something damaging or inconvenient to oneself self-defense mechanisms coping mechanisms and attachments often reluctantly is the true definition of the word confession which is synonymous with accountability this stripping of the self down to bare bones is a difficult stage in ascension, often confused with just an admission of guilt to a priest. Confession starts with true intention to change. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Proverbs 28.13 and I just, I think I found that block. It's, it was just, I was blaming. I just feel so angry at myself sometimes. It made me, today just made me realize that I, I've been mad at myself for decisions I've made throughout my life. And I guess I, I've been blaming other people for it. I don't know if I was just mad at God. I never realized how mad I was. I was um, finding comfort in that. Finding comfort in that evil f spirit. Of, and I think that's what's going to be so hard for me to let go. I've been holding on to that for so long. It's it's hard. I feel it. I know it's it's holding on tight, and I found comfort in it. I found comfort in the wrong things. You found comfort in the spirit of fear. Yes. Yeah. But now we're setting it free, to where you'll find comfort in the love of God. Yeah, that's what I felt today. You kept talking about these roadblocks and then finding the intentions of why I'm here and and I come I'm not gonna lie I come into this feeling like I don't want to do it my ego's saying I don't want to do this again and that's how I felt that's when I realized that's what I'm holding on to I'm holding on to the wrong I'm finding comfort in the wrong thing and I've probably been doing it my whole life Blaming other people for my unhappiness and my anger. Once you reach the doors to your sacred heart and face your battle of Armageddon, the very foundation of your ego will be rocked like a Richter 10 earthquake. The question is, do you slay the beast or do you take the easy route and run? 
this is a grand crossroad and your decision, your grand decision on which way to turn must be made before your arrival. It is so easy for the ego to fool you into seeing white is black and black is white due to the cognitive dissonance. The dark energy will do its damnedest to rationalize and justify itself within your own mind, causing you to stop your movement upward and search for escape routes through lateral energy sources such as enablers. This is the ego's security system. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Like you learn, I learned so much about myself that I otherwise wouldn't have known just by reading a book. You know, it's um, unexpected things popped up that you realize uh, in this world that we live in, you don't look at it as, as sin. I mean, I've always thought of sin as lying, cheating, stealing, stuff like that. But really the sin is the fear and the coping mechanisms and the defenses that are causing you a lot of pain and, and being weighed down and not being able to find God because of all that pollution. And I just, I learned not only through the baptisms, but the other practices that, you know, you have to face these or you're just going to keep covering them up. And that's what I've been doing my whole life. Just pretending stuff isn't there, covering it up. Kind of what I always say is putting it on the back burner, you know, and just ignoring it and just going forward. But so the, the baptisms um, forced me to kind of bring those up all of the all of the things that look them in, like looking in the mirror of self yeah definitely i i feel like i i learned i learned a lot about myself during this process when you come to know yourselves then you will become known and you will realize that it is you who are the sons of the living father but if you will not know yourselves you dwell in poverty and it is you who are that poverty <laughs> <laughs> and then I felt all these almost like these lights were just coming on like I pictured my heart coming alive with all this light I felt good and I felt an overwhelming um, gratefulness I felt grateful for it and even now I feel my head is lighter. My head feels lighter. Not so much in there holding me down. <sighs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. I didn't really have expectations, honestly. I mean, I, I watched a few of the videos online, but I... I didn't relate them to me. I don't know. I just thought, I don't have any... I don't, that's not going to happen to me, <laughs> but it, it did, it surely did. Um, Was it powerful? Yeah, very powerful. Yeah, it was the most powerful thing I've ever dealt with, I've ever gone through, I think. I mean, mentally, um, emotionally, definitely. If you put one word on this process, what would it be? Astonishing. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my sayings. You must be born again. John 3, 5-8 <laughs> Wow. We are free. I 
feel love like I've never felt before. <laughs> it feels so good. Oh. I feel like a child that can do no wrong. That my, like my father loves me no matter what. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just oh, I feel like a child. <laughs> that just oh, I feel so much. Oh. <laughs> I feel new. I feel like a new person. Born again. Yeah. Born of the water and born of the spirit. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I feel light. I feel like I'm just like the just in the twelve the eleven days the, oh, the old me is, is gone. Like it's it's and the new me just is, is ready to go forward and, and not allow, you know, anything of my old self to come back in and just now that I have the knowledge and the tools to move forward. What we call it being born again. Yeah. Reborn. That's what it feels like. Especially today. <laughs> I found my sacred heart. <laughs> As your high priest on this earth, in the order of Melchizedek, I am here to guide you on your inner journey to your sacred heart. I am here to expose your truth to you, to lift the true veil from your heart. Enter by narrow of the gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Thank you for watching, and remember, the kingdom of God is found within you. Find your sacred heart. <laughs>